Have you ever wondered how the whaling industry impacts our environment? As we embark on this journey, we'll explore the past, present and possible future of the whaling industry. Its history, steeped in tradition and economic gain, is as tumultuous as the ocean waters where these magnificent creatures reside. The whaling industry's origins trace back centuries, from the indigenous peoples who relied on whales for survival to the global enterprises of the 19th and 20th centuries. Whaling has long been a part of our human story. Yet, it's a story that's often obscured by the waves of controversy and ecological concern. Fast forward to today, the whaling industry is a shadow of its former self. Regulations and international agreements have curtailed much of the industrial scale whaling, yet some nations continue this practice, often under the guise of scientific research or cultural preservation. The question that surfaces then is not just about the industry's existence but its implications. The importance of discussing the ecological impacts of whaling cannot be overstated. It's not simply about the whales, it's about the intricate web of life that depends on them. From the smallest plankton to the largest predators, the health of our oceans hinges on the well-being of these gentle giants. Additionally, the whaling industry isn't just about hunting whales. It involves large vessels, fuel consumption and waste production, all of which contribute to the industry's carbon footprint. Moreover, the demand for whale meat is not driven by nutritional necessity, but rather by cultural and economic factors. This raises the question, does tradition justify the continued exploitation of these creatures? Lastly, the ethical implications of whaling are profound. These are sentient beings we're talking about, capable of experiencing pain and suffering. So where do we, as a society, draw the line between cultural tradition and animal welfare? As we dive deeper, we will uncover the untold story of the whaling industry and its environmental aftermath. Let's embark on this voyage of discovery together and perhaps gain a deeper understanding of our relationship with the ocean and its inhabitants. Did you know that whaling doesn't just affect whales, but the entire marine food web? Let's take a moment to think about the sea as a vast, interconnected web of life, with each species playing a vital role. Now imagine what happens when you start removing some of these threads, particularly the ones as significant as whales. The entire structure starts to weaken, doesn't it? Whales aren't just the giants of the ocean, they're also the linchpins of their ecosystems. They feed on massive amounts of krill and small fish, but here's the twist. They don't consume all marine life. Instead, their eating habits help regulate the populations of these smaller creatures, maintaining a balanced food web. When whales are overhunted, this natural regulation is disrupted. Without whales to keep them in check, populations of krill and small fish can skyrocket, leading to overpopulation. This might sound like a good thing, but remember, balance is key in nature. Overpopulation of these species can result in them depleting their own food sources, which are the microscopic plants and animals known as plankton. But the domino effect doesn't stop there. A reduction in plankton can have serious repercussions up and down the food chain. Many marine species depend on plankton for nourishment, from tiny shrimp to vast schools of fish. A decline in these populations can then affect the larger predators that feed on them and so on. The ripple effects can be felt throughout the entire ecosystem, ultimately leading to a less diverse and resilient marine environment. Moreover, whales play a crucial role beyond just predation. They're known as ecosystem engineers because of their whale pump effect. They bring nutrients from the deep sea to the surface, promoting the growth of plankton and boosting productivity in the ocean's surface waters. In essence, whales are the ocean's gardeners, cultivating a healthier, more vibrant marine ecosystem. So, when we remove them from the equation, we're not just losing an iconic species, we're messing with an intricate, beautifully balanced system that took millions of years to perfect. The removal of whales from our oceans doesn't just mean fewer whales, it means a less stable and healthy marine ecosystem. Beyond the water, the whaling industry leaves a significant mark on our atmosphere. Let's talk about the carbon footprint of the whaling industry. So what is a carbon footprint? Simply put, it's the total amount of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide, that are emitted into the atmosphere by particular human activities. Now, when we look at whaling, we might not immediately think about carbon emissions. But let's delve a little deeper. The whaling industry operates large, specialized ships that are designed to capture and process whales. These vessels are not exactly featherweights, 
They are massive, heavy, and require a lot of fuel to operate. Just imagine the amount of diesel these ships burn on a single expedition. Burning diesel fuel emits carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. And it's not just a one-time thing. These ships go on multiple expeditions each year, each time spewing more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. But it doesn't stop there. The processing of whale meat and the subsequent transportation of this product to market further contribute to the carbon footprint of the whaling industry. The refrigeration required to keep the meat fresh, the trucks, planes and ships used for distribution, all require energy and fuel and yes, you guessed it, they all produce greenhouse gases. So you see, the carbon footprint of the whaling industry is far from insignificant. It's a complex, multi-layered issue that is contributing to the global climate crisis. Each whale hunted, each expedition launched, each pound of whale meat processed and transported adds to this footprint. But here's the kicker. Whales themselves are carbon sinks. They absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than they emit. When a whale dies naturally, it sinks to the ocean floor, taking that carbon with it. So every whale hunted is not just a loss in terms of biodiversity, but also a missed opportunity to naturally reduce carbon in our atmosphere. The footprint of whaling extends far beyond the oceans, contributing to the global issue of climate change. Cultural and economic factors drive the demand for whale meat, not nutritional needs. Let's dive a bit deeper into this. Whaling, for some cultures, is a tradition that stretches back centuries. In countries like Japan, Iceland and Norway, whale hunting is deeply ingrained in the local heritage. Whale meat was once a staple food source and whaling was a way of life. It was a symbol of man's ability to conquer nature's most daunting creatures. But let's be clear, in the 21st century, with a plethora of food sources available, whale meat isn't a nutritional necessity. It's high in mercury, and while it does offer a good source of protein, there are countless other, more sustainable ways to acquire this nutrient. Yet, despite the environmental and health concerns, the demand for whale meat persists. Why? One reason is cultural pride. In some societies, consuming whale meat is seen as a way to honor traditions and ancestors. It's a part of a cultural identity that people are reluctant to let go of. Another driving factor is economics. The whaling industry, though controversial, is lucrative. In countries where whaling is legal, the meat, blubber and bones of these majestic creatures are sold for substantial sums. The industry also provides jobs and supports local economies. But here's the rub. The economic benefits of whaling are short-term, while the environmental damage is long-lasting. Depleting whale populations disrupt the balance of marine life, which can have ripple effects on other species and ecosystems. Beyond the ecological impact, there lies an ethical question at the heart of the whaling industry. When we take a moment to step back from the data, the statistics, and the industry's carbon footprint, we are left with the stark reality of the act itself. The pursuit, capture, and killing of these magnificent creatures, not out of necessity, but for cultural and economic gains. To fully grasp the gravity of this ethical dilemma, we need to delve deeper into the world of these marine giants. Whales, as we've come to understand, are not just large mindless creatures swimming aimlessly in our oceans. They are highly intelligent beings with complex social structures much like our own. They form close-knit family units, communicate using intricate sound patterns, and even display signs of empathy and altruism. It's this remarkable intelligence and emotional capacity that makes the act of whaling even more ethically questionable. Now let's consider the hunting process. The methods often used in whaling are far from humane, Many whales endure prolonged suffering before they finally succumb. The harpoons used are designed to penetrate deep into the whale's body, causing immense pain and distress. It's not uncommon for a whale to struggle for hours or even days before it finally dies. This level of suffering is difficult to justify, especially when we acknowledge that the demand for whale meat is largely cultural and not a matter of survival or necessity. So, where does this leave us? The ethical implications of whaling are as vast as the oceans these creatures inhabit. It forces us to question our actions and our impact, not just on the environment, but on the individual lives we are affecting. It's not merely about preserving biodiversity or reducing carbon emissions, as crucial as those aspects are. It's about respecting the inherent value of life in all its forms. The ethical questions surrounding whaling require us to look beyond the simple numbers and consider the individuals within the species. 
Understanding the ecological impacts of the whaling industry is only the first step. As we've seen throughout this video, the consequences of this industry are far-reaching and severe. It's not just about the depletion of majestic whales, but also about the entire marine food web that's affected, the massive carbon footprint left behind, and the cultural demand that drives the hunt, despite whale meat not being a vital food source. So, what's next? How can we address these issues and what does the future of whaling look like? Well, it's all about solutions, awareness and policy changes. Let's start with potential solutions. On an individual level, we can reduce the demand for whale products by making more sustainable choices. Opt for alternatives, such as eco-friendly products that don't contribute to the hunting of these magnificent creatures. But let's not stop there. Sustainable fishing practices and responsible tourism also play a huge role in protecting marine life and their habitats. On a larger scale, it's up to governments and international bodies to enforce stricter regulations on whaling. This includes imposing harsher penalties on illegal whaling activities, investing in conservation programs, and promoting the use of cleaner technologies in the fishing industry. Public awareness is another crucial factor. The more people know about the impacts of whaling, the more they can take action. This is where education, advocacy and media come into play. By spreading the word and fostering a culture of respect for marine life, we can shift public opinion and motivate change. Policy changes are also essential. We need to push for laws that protect whales and their habitats and hold industries accountable for their environmental impacts. This means advocating for policies that prioritize conservation and sustainable practices over short-term economic gain. Remember, Every choice we make has an impact. So let's make choices that protect our oceans and the incredible life they hold. The future of the whaling industry and the future of our oceans lies in our hands.